Jacob with me today. We're gonna meet Joanne, the amazing designer for Murdoch Mystery. Come, come. I'm Joanna Surcoma, and I'm here at the Ian Drummond Collection. Joanna? Yeah. Tell me three words that describe you. Oh, three words. Uh, I would say dedicated, astute, and droll. Is there a current piece of clothing that you are in love with right now? Because it's spring in Toronto, I would say all my vintage cashmere. Looking back, what one thing you wish you know when you're 19? Oh, 19. Basically, I, I wish I knew that everything was going to be just great. That I knew my path, I was on the right path, and that everything was going to be just exactly the way it was supposed to be and not be anxious about whatever my future was. What's something surprising that most people don't know about you? I think the surprising thing about me is that I love swimming and wearing like nerdy swim caps and just swimming with all the retired people at 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> How did your journey in costume design begin? Because I discovered the library books. Oh, okay. Hold on. Sorry. I gotta stop. I gotta... It totally matches my outfit, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> I discovered the the historical costume section in my high school library and I brought them home and my mom was like, oh, we got a new Xerox machine at the office. I'm dating myself when I say Xerox machine. And she started photocopying it all for me and I started collecting them and then started doing the school plays. And then uh, I knew that that's where I wanted to be when I was 14 years old, that I wanted to be a costume designer. Your portfolio is quite wide range from historical drama to yeah. sci-fi. Yeah. Do you have a favorite period? Um, I could tell you that I have a favorite period that I haven't done yet, yeah. which is I would kill to do like a comedy or a used car, car salesman or a, um, like a newsroom or a hairstyle salon, but like in the 60s, 70s. So oh, wow. I'm really, I'm gonna do that one day in my career. That's gonna be so much fun. That's though. gonna be so much fun. And I'm also fascinated with the years of like 1978 to 1984. That could be very interesting, yeah. What was it like to contribute to the beloved Canadian series, Murdoch Mystery, as a costume designer that had been running for- 17 seasons. seasons. Oh. It is an incredible joy and like a gift to my career to be able to contribute to Murdoch Mysteries. It's such a, it's so beloved by the fans, so many people across the entire world, like the world. And to be part of that, uh, they're so supportive and to be part of that and get to be so creative. Lots of different types of characters all the time. There's a creative, like creative pattern. You have to go really, really fast got to come up with things really quickly. Um, and all the actors are just, are tremendous. They're so, they're, everyone enjoys it. It's really great. Any highlight? A huge highlight of my career uh, from Murdoch Mysteries is that from the scraps, like we make costumes on that show, and from the scraps that are left over, uh, a friend of mine named Emily, she, uh, Emily Mooney, she said, well, why don't we make a quilt? So we took, those scraps, she organized it and fans from across Canada, US and parts of Europe made individual quilt squares out of the scraps of the costumes. And then uh, it all got put together into something called the Murdoch quilt. And then it was auctioned off for the uh, Urban, Urban Alliance of Race Relations. So it's an incredible, it's a very beautiful piece. It was actually on display a couple times too. So I would say that's a highlight of my time with Murdoch. That is so beautiful. It is, yeah. yeah. How did working on such a long-running series, yes. Murdoch Mystery, impact your career? I've been doing costume design uh, for about 20 years before I got to Murdoch Mysteries. Okay, now I'm totally dating myself. And uh, <laughs> for about 20 years before I started Murdoch Mysteries. And it was not until I hit Murdoch and I realized what a fan base it has and how much it means to people and how recognizable it is as an entity that has really, I guess, boy, bo bolstered, bolstered my career in the Canadian landscape. Uh, just made me more recognizable and it kind of opened doors for when I'm working on the CAFCAT awards or I'm putting together the, the costume design seminars and that type of stuff. 
In your Emporian era costume, process seemed to be more focused on posture than silhouette. Can you describe other techniques you use for historical accuracy? Uh, what do we, yes, uh, what do we use for historical accuracy? Well, I mean, traditionally you would be, this is not an Edwardian corset, that's more of a Victorian uh, shaped corset, but with the Edwardian period, that's, that's quite interesting, is actually you would lace everybody up and then over top of that you put, uh, you would put all the, all the clothing and they aren't form fitting in the Edwardian period. So really a corset is, is about the uh, posture and making sure that all our actresses remember to stand up straight and not slouch. That's actually more important than uh, the actual like corset pieces because you, you don't do a very tight, Edwardian is not a tight silhouette. It's all very lousy over top, but we want to make sure that everyone knows how to stand up properly. Posture. Posture. <laughs> What advice would you give to an aspiring costume designer? Do as much research as you can. There are a lot of excellent podcasts. There's a lot of excellent blogs, a lot of excellent YouTube uh, interviews with costume designers. Um, volunteer as much as possible. You know, Canadian Film Center, short films, definitely join CAFCAD. The networking opportunities are amazing. I've seen people who like came and volunteered to sweep the floor at an event are now the vice president of the union. So, you know, you never know where that break is going to come. Um, and uh, yeah, if you love it, keep working at it for sure. You know what I find really exciting about the, the future of costume design in Canada is uh, the relationships being built between designers and emerging fashion designers as well, like costume designers and fashion designers, that there is a lot of interest in promoting BIPOC work which is really quite interesting. And uh, I'm fascinated to see what's gonna happen with AI because it's quite miraculous what people are coming up with. And yeah. a lot of those things are quite makeable. Like it's not just a fantastical thing that can't be created, but there's some fascinating styling going on in that. Yes. In that. And uh, you know, it, it scares me and also fascinates me at the same it's time. It's fascinating because yeah. it cut out a lot of work and cut out a lot of, um, research so you yeah. can like tap all that in yeah but yeah. i mean it's a huge discussion as to what is like really your design anymore but on the other hand we've all been influenced from the moment we started watching yeah. television and reading magazines exactly all those references that have like made their way in our head and yeah. how those all yeah it's yeah i remember like you know we used to cut our little silhouette and yeah. then glue them together yeah 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 so ai doing all that ai is doing so all that. how that different it's a fascinating question. It's a fasc it's yeah, it's a curious future for sure. Yeah. So right now you are a current chair. Yes. And a past president of the CapCat Award. Uh, can you tell me what is CapCat and how does CapCat contribute to Canadian fashion in the film? Uh, CapCat is the Canadian Alliance for Film and Television, Costume Arts and Design. And we uh, promote and support costume designers, costume artisans, costume makers for film and television yeah. web series across Canada. Uh, so we we put on networking events. We put we do a lot of education. We do community outreach, um, and the CAFCAT Awards, which is my baby. And it's the yeah, it's a gala evening of of costume design in Canada and it's tremendous and let me tell you the red carpet for that is beautiful yes. yeah yeah it's really it's really great and it, and it's so important to me to support and promote Canadian costume design because there's not a lot of that in Canada by any means uh, and I love that we recognize the different genres and we are the only organization we we were the only organization that also uh, recognized costume illustrators and costume builders yes. and co and the special effects artists. So that's also like very dear to my heart. Rapid Fire Word Association. No pressure. <laughs> one word. One word. One word. Oh my gosh. Okay. One word. Opalin. Uh, Dracula. Dracula. Interesting. Have you seen the costume design for Dracula based yeah. on some flint stuff? And Ico is a designer. So beautiful. Futuristic. Uh, AI. Superhero. Uh, 
costume designer. Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> Expressive. Expressive. Uh, poetry. Romance. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Joanna. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. <laughs> thank you.